The theater. 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 <laughs> the theater. <laughs> yep, that's pretty much how. It that's is. how everyone is. Yeah. Theater. What do you think of when you hear the name? A large stuffy building with lots of large stuffy rich people? Or that place you went to when you were five to go see the Nutcracker? I'm Marcy, a soon to be graduating theater major at St. Louis University. I technically started doing theater back in high school, but my first role was as my principal in our eighth grade talent show. Little did I know, I had found my calling that would make me truly happy. That's why I'm going to take you behind the curtain. This is Gary Barker, my mentor and acting professor from the last four years. He's one of the most interesting and unique people I've ever met. Hello, my name is Gary Barker, chair of fine and performing arts, actor, director, fashion icon. Every society throughout time, the primary way that values have been communicated have been through stories. And that's how we communicate what's important in a society. We learn how to interact with each other, in part by modeling what we see in our families and in interpersonal dynamics, but in large part through the stories we see displayed out in front of us. It's no accident, I think, that many of the religious leaders throughout time, Christ, the Buddha, Muhammad, whoever you might pick, often shared the value system that they were trying to teach others through storytelling. While people may think that they're just going for an escapist reason to go see the latest you know, Harry Potter or a Transformer movie, in fact, those movies, whether we're consciously aware of it or not, are giving us a value system. These are some of my fellow students and friends at SLU. I've worked beside each of them, and we've been through some really rough and really rewarding times together. My parents always knew that I was going to do theater ever since I was little. I think since I was three, I would like take out all my stuffed animals and make elaborate plays with them and make like these huge plays. And then when my brother and sister were born, I forced them into doing movies. I did my first show in seventh grade, seventh and eighth grade performance at St. Peter's elementary and I just remember my teacher said hey you know have you guys been watching Billy today he came on stage with such presence and such whatever you guys need to be more like him and I was like shoot that's awesome then I got started in high school and that kind of snowballed into the rest of my life <laughs> before a cast can even begin to set the show on stage there are weeks of preparation beforehand uh, we get a pretty intense like four hour block of rehearsal time and then go maybe a week without touching that part of the script again. So a lot of it was uh, homework for us. Uh, we'd get our notes, be able to spend a lot of outside time really figuring out what all of those notes meant. Becoming, becoming part of a whole with your individual scene. There's a lot of vocal work, a lot of timing work, learning not to give yourself time to think but trusting these characters to know what to say immediately. It's four and a half hours a night, Monday through Friday, and then Saturday's five and a half hours, and it just depends on the director as to what day you get off. You usually have one night off, and the rest you're in the theater for forever. So I think that's something that theater is really good at teaching, is that you have to manage your time wisely, or there's no way. Uh, I spend a lot of time uh, looking up interviews and articles about the, about the time period so that we come in fully informed, uh, looking at photos, the interviews, um, so that we, we come in with a certain common knowledge about where this story is being drawn from. Just like any sport, no one can just arrive at the theater and perform. Everyone usually has their own unique warming up process. It's essential for an actor to be limbered up and fully aware to perform even if it sounds ridiculous.
our bodies and our voices are our instruments. So making sure that we're loose and focused and ready to deliver wholeheartedly. You're doing physical exercises, making sure our vocal instrument is warmed up. So I always take a few minutes to really sink in that, that we, this show has to be predatory uh, so that we're ready to just pounce on the whole thing. When you walk on that stage, you are in the hands of your fellow castmates. It's a network, a connection that makes the show really fantastic. Without a cohesive goal from the cast, a show will never be convincing, or entertaining for that matter. I think the best thing is the relationships that you make with the people and the friends that you get out of it. Theater is a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice for everybody that's involved with it, really. You have to miss a lot of things. Uh, I don't get to spend as much time with my friends as I would like to, um, but they know that I'm doing something that I love. And it's the same with my family. In 06, I think, I got my like first professional role in town and I was so excited. But um, during the last weekend of the shows, my grandmother was dying. And the day she died, I had to leave her deathbed like by her side to go and perform. Yeah, there'll be times like where you will miss Christmas or you'll miss Easter, and it just comes with the territory. In a career where so many things can go haywire and trial and error is key, it's helpful to hear from people who have been doing this for a while. Well, what I'm struggling to come to terms with now is patience. And be patient. Um, you're not going to be the best right off the bat and it's going, there's going to be a lot of mistakes along the way, but there's going to be a lot of great moments as well. And just to have patience with yourself and have patience with the people that you're working with. I've always been told professionalism, 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 ever since I was a ninth grader. Theater is very scary, very terrifying, but like in a good way, in its unpredictability and the way you don't know what's, what's going to come around the corner, whether you're going to have a job or not whether you're going to get cast or not. My life revolves around theater right now and, and the way that I, that I put everything else on hold, you just never know. And that, as a career, it's very scary, but not for a second does that deter me from pursuing theater. Theater reaches across the language barrier. You don't have to be able to understand to see what I'm portraying on stage or to see what you know, my castmates are portraying on stage. I believe the arts are important. I believe they have the power to transform people's lives. I believe they have the power to transform community. And that I have been called to be a truth teller in this way. It's service, frankly, in my particular bent. It's my ministry, if you will, in, in terms of my value system. It's the way I've been called to minister to the world that I'm in. One of the reasons I love working with our director is that he reminds us constantly that this is art and that art has the potential to change the people who see it. So knowing that we're showing our audience something completely new has really kept me motivated. What keeps me going is, is knowing, being 100% sure that this is something that I love. And it may not be for my entire adult life that I pursue this, but right now, as a 20-year-old, I know that this is where, where I'm most happy and where I feel most fulfilled. And I've been rejected plenty, and, and I've been accepted probably more than, more than I will be in the near future. Being positive that this is, knowing that this is what makes me happy, helps me to, to get beyond the failure and get beyond all the obstacles. Expecting to have a very low income and and all those different challenges that come with it.